What's going on, guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. I am back again. Okay, so today we're going to be discussing dry fire. Now, <clears throat> dry fire is something that any any firearm owner really should be doing. Okay, <clears throat> and the experts will tell you that if you do a little bit of dry fire every day, it's really going to take your accuracy from here to kind of here, right? A little bit brings you a long way, and too much is too much. So I've noticed that a lot of guys do dry fire something like this. By the way, safety check like three times already. I have no ammunition around me. Okay. Uh, empty chamber. You can see, let's finger bang it. Okay. No mag in the mag. Well, I'm looking one, two, three. Okay. Triple check. Boom. We're good. All right. So <clears throat> I've noticed a lot of guys do dry fire like this. Nothing wrong with that. Good form, all that, right? <clears throat> Bringing it back to retention, racking it, pushing it out, acquiring the sight picture, front sight crystal clear, sights in alignment with the rear sight, working that finger placement on the trigger, different for everybody, all that fundamental stuff, right? But something that I like to do to kind of maximize my dry fire training is a racket. I'll get all my fundamentals down. I'll slowly squeeze back that trigger and I'll kind of visualize a trigger reset. Now, unless you have like one of these dry fire mags, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to practice that trigger reset. And by the way, I bought this. It was expensive and it doesn't really work and I don't like it. So I couldn't recommend the dry fire mag. Uh, not this one at least, but this isn't uh, a review of that. But one thing that I like to do is after I've gone ahead and released that trigger, I'll bring it back and tap and rack and then push it back out and I'll do it all over again. Okay. Tap, rack, and I'll push it out, acquire, boom, and I'll do this. And this is how I like to practice my dry fire. Okay. Because the way I figure it is in a real gunfight, obviously, you get that click and no bang. What's the SOP? Tap, rack, push it out, boom, okay? So we want to make sure that we maximize our training to the best of our ability. Obviously, number one, ammo is still expensive no matter how you slice it. Number two, we can't all get to the range every day. Yeah, it would be nice if we had an unlimited budget and an unlimited supply of ammunition, we'd all be Rambo, but we don't. So we want to make sure that we're maximizing our dry fire training that we do get at home, okay? And we do that by, if you can see in the background there, I have those little orange sticky notes placed kind of all around and I'll triple safety check my get, and then I'll go ahead and dry fire. But when I'm dry firing, I'm always making sure that I'm maximizing my shit. Not only, okay, am I doing this, tap, rack, acquire, boom, but I'm also, okay, working my angling. I'm working on pieing around a corner, okay? I'm doing things like that that are actually more practical. So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, enhance your dry firing abilities if you are, you know, firearm owner or if you, especially if you have your CCW, okay? In my opinion, all of us out there who have our CCW, it's your responsibility to like legit carry it with you and make sure that you're, you know, honestly, make sure that you're an expert marksman at it, okay? Um, and even if you don't have the time to become an expert marksman, you really need to know that you're going to hit what you're shooting at, okay? Because if you look at the mall shooting that just happened where the 22-year-old guy, uh, CCW guy who was legally carrying, took out the mass shooter in like very quick, short order, that's exactly what we need more of out there because unfortunately those shootings aren't going to stop. So it is up to us protectors to carry our gun with us. If you have your damn license and you're lawfully, legally allowed to be carrying, we'll fucking carry it with you, okay? Yeah, I realize that not everyone can go in. All of the, you know, certain places have so stupid sign up or you're technically not allowed to carry in them. Obey the law. But if you can be carrying, carry. And when you are carrying, my point is this, is that when I was in Israel, they really drilled it into us that when you fire that weapon, okay, Anything outside of the target zone, you could be hitting a civilian, especially in a crowded market. You know, their point over there was Jerusalem is like fucking packed with people all the time. Well, same thing uh, in a lot of cities across the United States. If something were to happen, you know, and you're acquiring your target, but if you're not hitting what you're shooting at, 
Well, you could be hitting innocent bystanders, okay, behind them. And also do keep in mind, please, what could be behind that individual or that threat that you're shooting at because rounds can and will penetrate, right? Depending on what kind of round that you're using and all that. So those are some quick dry fire tips from me to you. We are going to be pushing out more videos. We've been on a little hiatus. Okay. I've been dealing with stuff, but I do want to make sure that I'm pushing out relevant and good tactical tips and tricks and hacks, all that stuff for you guys, because you deserve it. And we need to keep up on our, our training and our proficiency. So keep that in mind when you dry fire, okay, push it out, uh, proper sight alignment, sight picture, front sight, proper finger placement, and all that. When you bring it back, tap and rack, and then bring it back like that. And, you know, if you do, I don't know, 50 reps of this per day, it's really going to help. So that way, that whatever happens, you bring it to bear, okay? Boom, I get a click and no bang. My reaction is immediately tap, rack, and reacquire. So keep that in mind, guys. Until next time, please remember that you were your first and last line of defense. Go to fightingsecrets.com is the website. If you want to grab some serious hand-to-hand -hand combat training, it's all online. It's all super great. And by the way, guys, I am working, okay, as a paid promoter for Duration Health. Duration Health is a really fucking cool website. These medical kits that they offer have antibiotics, EpiPens, and you get a consultation with an actual medical doctor, okay? And they're going to prescribe you all the medications that you might need inside your medical kit, okay? Depending on the area of operations you're in and all of that stuff. I highly recommend these guys. And if you go over to durationhealth.com slash go to fighting secrets, you're going to get $50 off your first order. You thank me later, but Duration Health is a really amazing, amazing uh, product. And I can say this as a guy who not only has been prepping for a long time, but a guy who's traveled the world and been sick in like some third world freaking countries. And I wish I had had some of this prescription medication and stuff like that. And not only that, a consult with a doctor and ongoing, okay, consultations and things like that. They got your back 100% whenever you travel. So the link's going to be below here. Check them out if you want. And uh, I do highly recommend that, especially if you travel, but even if you're just prepping, check these guys out. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.